These tier videos are proving to be very popular on YouTube at the moment, so I thought I'd have a go. My field of endeavour is allegedly golf, so my tier video is going to be about golf manufacturers. The tiers that I've gone for, the levels wise, we have got God tier, obviously that's the, the higher, higher than the highs, that's as high as you can get nowadays. Then we've got very decent, then we've got meh, then we've got put that down, and then we've got dog muck rated, rating, ranking golf clubs in order. So then, without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we've got one of the big boys, we've got Callaways. When you think of Callaway, one of the first things that spring to mind for me, Apex MBs, best looking, one of best looking irons you can buy today. Another thing, oddly enough, that I think about when I think of Callaway is the FT3 drivers. Can you remember the FT3 drivers? I can remember Phil Mickelson winning the Masters in 20... When were I now? He had two FT3 drivers. He had a draw um, bias one and a fade bias one. So that's one of the first things I think about when I think of Callaway. Obviously, they've got the Phil Mickelson wedges, which have been extremely popular. Shut that door. Yeah, again with Callaway, you've got the Mac Daddy wedges, which are hugely popular. You also have the Odyssey tie. So Odyssey are owned by Callaway. Odyssey makes some of the best putters available today. You've got the Stroke Lab series, which are the most current and popular putters that Odyssey make. You also have another offset from the Callaway company. You have the Toulon Design. That's their more premium range of putters, kind of looking at the Scotty Cameron realm of putters, uh, price-wise, certainly. The one criticism of Callaway is, are they're getting a bit too expensive not just of Callaway that's with other brands that we're going to talk about in this video however because of the quality of the products from driver to putter all the way through the bag I've got to put Callaway god tier the light in my camera I have to stare at it and it's, it's like I don't know if you can see how bright that is but it's proper zinging in my eyes next up another big hitter we've got Taylor made when you think of Taylor made you think of Tiger Woods modern day you think of Rory McIlroy you think of Dustin Johnson one thing that Taylor made do better than most I think is uh, paying the big bucks to get the big boys on board so that brand association out on tour is extremely strong whenever you look on telly most people will make the association with the best golfers in the world using Taylor made golf clubs which is an extremely smart marketing tool that they've employed over the last few years uh, the clubs, however, also have been making a big impact over the last few years. You will look at the M series of drivers. Before they brought out the M series of drivers, my main criticism of TaylorMade would have been that they brought too many out across the year. So when we were looking at like R11s and R1s and aero burners and jet speeds and whatever, far too many of them were brought out each year and they weren't the, the product cycles worked in a way that you couldn't sell all of the drivers in a pro shop uh, scenario before the new ones were released, so they didn't really work. M series, they've just gone M1, M2, M3, M4, so two drivers per year, and it's worked fantastically ever since. In the P70W irons, you have some of the best looking irons money can buy again, so there are kind of one blade per manufacturer, I'll probably reel off that really aesthetically are mega mega pleasing but yeah the P7TWs are somewhere else aren't they and in, even in the putter department something that TaylorMade have not been renowned in the last like god knows how many years they've brought out the Spider or certainly the Spider Tour and I think it was Jason Day that kicked it off using that ever since then caught that wildfire off the back of that they made the Spider X and it's just worked a charm for TaylorMade ever since so again from driver to putter, even ball, TP5, TP5X, also mint, tailor-made, god tier as well. Next up, we've got Ping. Now, for long-standing subscribers of the channel, you could probably say that I'm a Ping fanboy. That is entirely correct. You're not wrong with that whatsoever. Um, have Ping ever made a bad club? Cast your mind back. I can't remember them ever making a bad club. No. Comment below. If you think Ping have ever made a bad club, whack it down there in the comments below. Customer service from Ping is absolutely exceptional. If you are to buy a set of irons, I know that uh, location-wise, I live quite near uh, the European fitting headquarters, which is in Gainsborough. It's about 45 minutes away from here. Uh, what they do if you buy a set of pin clubs no matter where you bought them from, if you take them back to the fitting centre on a Friday, they will adjust your lie angles for free. Exceptional customer service. Fitting capabilities are tremendous, so we obviously got the world-renowned colour coding for the irons as well. Blueprints, as the P7TW and the Apex MB are the, like the signature bladed iron of pings, they're absolutely beautiful. And then you factor in the answer putter, that you know is, it is the shape when you think of a putter. The putter that you're thinking of right now is the answer putter. Due to that incredible popularity, I have got to again put ping. God tier. All these aren't uh, God tier, by the way. There are some terrible ones, but they're coming later on and we're going to have a good laugh about them. Next up, we've got Cobra. Now, Cobra weren't necessarily a big hitter 
in my opinion, in the golfing industry up until they released the F9 driver. And within all the testing that I did earlier this year, F9 was probably the best driver of 2019. When you think back over the years to the most uh, famous clubs that Cobra have brought out, you think of the trusty Rusties, uh, the wedges that they've had running for quite a long time now. And in the last couple of years, they've been made a little bit more popular by Bryson DeChambeau and his one length irons. And I think as soon as they acquired Bryson DeChambeau as a tall player, he's really started pushing the boundaries of uh, equipment technology and, and really, uh, developing his own ideas through Cobra and it's you know it's, it's brilliant to see. You also factor in the you also factor in the popularity of Ricky Fowler and what Cobra are doing here is building an extremely strong brand so for that reason they're not quite god tier for me but I'm going to say Cobra are very decent. Next up we've got Mizuno this is an interesting one probably making the best irons consistently year on year of any of these manufacturers I'm going to say Mizuno so you, they cater for all different types of golfer feeling wise they're just incredible looks wise you've got the bladed ones again that come out uh, this year that just look sensational the new drivers that Mizuno brought out are good don't think they ever used to be, but they are good. Uh, one reason why I say that they never used to be w was because you look at uh, the tour players that Mizuno have on their books, such as Luke Donald always used the M series or certainly deviated away from Mizuno drivers, but the recent ones like the ST180 and Co, very, very good. Wedges, very good. I know they've got the Betanardi association with the putters as well, but yeah, pretty much because of how good the irons are, I'm gonna say Mizuno, not quite, again, God tier, but the in there uh, strong. To, to moderate very decent. Next up we've got Titleist and Scotty Cameron. For many people the standard bearer in the golf equipment industry. I want to start with a golf ball, the Titleist Pro V1. For many people and probably myself uh, the best golf ball that money can buy. They've got an incredible range of irons, woods, wedges, you think of the woods. They've got the extremely popular TS range. They've got a TS 1, 2, 4. 1 and 4 not being as popular as the 2 and 3. Uh, you've got uh, the new T100, T200, T300 irons. In past, it's been AP1, AP2, AP3. Uh, you've got the ever present CBs, MBs, all incredibly well performing, uh, good looking irons. You get into the wedges, you've got Vokies, which is like, I think I've had the market share for the last five, six years now. And then you get into putters and you've got Scotty Cameron. So what more do you need? I think very easily for me is God tier because you look at that driver to putter through the bag again, it's just, Pretty exceptional really. I think if you were to ask someone um, if you had the choice of any sponsor on tour who would you go for because of the quality from top to bottom in the bag they probably would go for Titleist so again Titleist god tier. Next up bit of a funky one we've got PXG. No doubt in my mind that PXG clubs are sensational right. I know that from a lot of people that have done some testing and shared their results online it's as good as anything that money can buy today but the problem that we've got is that money that buys them. For me, it's just a little bit too expensive. I have always likened these golf clubs to Rolex watches. So I've got a watch that cost me six pound. I bought it from uh, Mark at Asda. It tells the time. It's literally not skipped a second for as long as I've had it. And that's been about two years. So it's doing an incredible job. Why would you buy a Rolex that tells the time exactly the same over my six quidder from uh, Mark at the Asda? It's a prestige thing, isn't it? People will look in your bag if you've got PXG irons and go, wow, this guy must have some serious cheddar, you know what I mean? So when it comes to performance, there will be, I think, well, a well custom fit set in every manufacturer that will come out as good as, if not slightly better than the PXG. Why would you buy it? Because it's a prestige thing, isn't it? If you can justify spending the money on PXG clubs, go ahead and do it. You know, there's, there probably will be as good as anything that money can buy today. Are they better? I'm going to say no. Would I justify spending the money on PXG clubs? Absolutely not. For that reason, they're going into put that down. Put that seven iron you've got there. Put that down. Next up, we have uh, Dunlop synonymous with the Sports Direct brand. Why, why, why would you buy Dunlop clubs? Um, in my experience, they just break. Just, just like clubs, balls, just breaks. They did make one ball which was good and I think it was called the VP1 and it had the really soft polyurethane cover, you know, made to mimic the likes of your Pro V1s and stuff like that. But to be fair, one piece of equipment out of God knows how much they made. When you think about Dunlop, what do you think about? I think about 64 degree lob wedges, that um, Basil's got in his bag because he can't loft it over bunkers. And I think about drivers with steel shafts in. And yeah, that's 
I'm also thinking that driver with steel shaft is going to snap at some point as well. Um, without sounding too scathing, I wouldn't even buy a Dunlop starter set. I think that there's far better starter sets out there when you look at the likes of Wilson staff that will come to later that, that are just so much better quality for the kind of money that you might be shelling out when you first start. Yeah, for me it's a big fat no. These go straight into dog muck. Next up we've got Srixen. This is a funny one, this one. So the Mech, some great golf clubs nowadays, Srixen. The Mech Fantastic Irons. Uh, Cleveland is the one that I want to come to next, but they obviously I think are owned by Srixen or Cleveland owns Srixen, Srixen owns Cleveland. Not quite sure how that relationship works. Uh, they do make modern day as well, very good drivers, very good looking, very traditional looking, so you only have black uh, squat heads in the drivers, uh, very similar looking to the likes of the Titleist 9, 10, 12, 13, 15 D range, and it's more like the D3, the, the slightly lower spinning version, so very good looking drivers. Like a great variety of golf balls, so you look at that mid-range of golf ball um, sector, they've pretty much got that sewn up in the AD triple threes, the soft feel and the ulti softs. Like I said before, make some great combinations in irons. And yeah, they're just a very solid brand. So for that reason, these are gonna go in at a, a, a pretty reasonable, very decent. Next up, Cleveland, as I said, owned by Srixen, or not sure how that relationship works. Great wedges, ever since they brought the RTX range out, and I can remember even back to Cleveland CG12s. CG12s were beautiful, CG15s were really good. Always had really good milling in the wedges, so for really high spin, high performance. Unfortunately, not that good everywhere else. I know that there is a new launcher HB driver that's just came out that a couple of guys on YouTube have started reviewing. Not sure how that's been performing. I have heard good things about it though. The original launcher, oh my God. First driver, right, with a carbon composite crown. You heard that here first, I'm pretty sure anyway. Don't, don't quote me on that. I had that driver, it was an absolute beast. I think I had a, um, what shaft did I have in that? I think I had like a stock Cleveland shaft in, and it was just mint. Carbon crown, titanium face, wicked. My first driver, I think, getting into a men's adult set that. So yeah, great fond memories of that driver. So yeah, probably better a few years ago than they are now. Uh, wedge is still very good though, but because there's not much going for them at the moment. We'll wait to see how this new driver and these new wood sets come out. Um, but for me, Cleveland goes into the meh. Next up, we've got Wilson, formerly Wilson staff. I think they're now just Wilson Golf, used by current US Open uh, winner, Gary Woodland. The irons that they're making at the minute, the FG Tours, I think they are, look superb, the flagship blade again. Just released a new driving iron, also looks mint. You had the Cortex driver, which was um, a byproduct of a sh uh, American design show, I think it was called Driver versus Driver, and people participated to design a driver, and the winning design then got put into mass manufacturing. That's where the Wilson Cortex driver was born. When you think back to Padraig Harrington's major days, and, and when he started being successful in the majors, they were using Wilson staff clubs, uh, irons, I think, wedges, not a putter, not the wood, so it primarily irons even back when Padraig was uh, in his A-day. The balls that they make, such as the DX3, I think they are a very, very soft, very similar performing to likes of the Strix and AD triple threes, uh, all too soft, soft feels, those kind of balls. But for me, they're just a little bit dull as a brand, they're a little bit boring. I am fully aware that this video is not gonna get me any brand deals anytime soon, so I'm willing to take that hit. But again, similar to Cleveland, Wilson going the meh, and lastly, but certainly least, we're going to talk about Slazinger. Now, I'm going to sum Slazinger up in one photo. Yeah. Um, similar to Dunlop, I think they're just synonymous nowadays for making clubs that break. Balls that are probably more suited to pebble dashing driveways than they are being used on a golf course. Um, yeah, probably good for Seve. Well, definitely good for Seve. He used Slazinger clubs back in the day. Um, not so good for us nowadays. Slazinger go into the uh, dog muck section. I'm sure you'll not be uh, surprised to hear that. Right then, if you've enjoyed this video, thanks ever so much for watching. Uh, of course, these are just my opinions. Um, don't take this video too seriously. This is just kind of a case of me seeing what's out there in the YouTube world and hopefully bringing it into the golfing industry as I, as I tend to do sometimes. Sometimes I do it quite well, I think. Sometimes I am absolute, absolutely horrific at it. So feel free to comment below what end of the spectrum do you think this video fits under. But yeah, basically this was just a bit of a mess about video. If, you, if however, right, you've enjoyed this video,
video, please make sure you like it because then that gives this video more chance to be seen out and around the YouTube world. Would only like it, however, if you have actually liked this video. If you've not liked it, then just, just leave it. Just like turn your computer off or I don't know, click on James Robinson or something. Subscribe if you've not done so already. And until next time, stay. And until next time, keep your eyes out for some more truly groundbreaking and innovative uh, content from myself. So thanks very much for watching. This has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, until next time, cheers.